Hello and welcome to our lesson about the reactions of alkenes. Uh, we've already covered a little bit of this in class but I just want to make sure that um, all the information that we need uh, we cover and it will also give us opportunity to practice some of the things that we've looked at in class. Um, so there's the lesson objectives there. Um, but the first thing we need to be able to do is recognise the structural difference between an alkene and an alkane. So we've seen the structure of alkanes. This case um, is an example of propane. So propane has the formula C3H8. Remember that last time uh, we've looked repeatedly at the idea that the general formula of an alkane Cane is CnH2n plus 2. So for every carbon atom, we have twice as many plus another 2. So three, if we have three carbon atoms, we'll have 3 times 2, which is 6, plus another 2, which is 8. Um, an alkene has a double bond in it. There is only one double bond uh, between two carbon atoms in any alkene. If there are more than um, one double bond, it's a different type of compound uh, called a diene. And if there's three, it would be a triene. But all we're interested in at the moment is alkenes. Uh, this has the formula C3H6. So it obviously has a different general formula, which is CnH2n, and that's something that we need to know. So I'll label this as the general formula for an alkene. Notice on here that um, there is one less carbon atom, uh, one less hydrogen atom on this carbon atom than there is in the equivalent alkane. And that's because uh, one of the bonding places uh, for ca uh, carbon is being taken up with this double bond. So if we look at this carbon atom, there are one, two, three, four bonds to it. If we look at this carbon atom, one, two, three, four. So that explains why there are two less hydrogen atoms per uh, for an alkene compared to the equivalent alkane. Um, we talk about um, unsaturated, and that's to do, uh, alkenes as being unsaturated, and that's to do with what we've said up here about there being less hydrogen atoms on here. So you could say for unsaturated is um, a hydrocarbon that has a carbon-carbon double bond. Um, but the reason it's called unsaturated is because there are two less hydrogen atoms than the equivalent alkane. So if we look back at our example here, propene is C3H6. Propane is C3H8. So the reason this is unsaturated is because there are two less hydrogen atoms. Um, I'm going to have a look at doing an example here. So my example question is for us to draw the structure of pentene. Now the first thing we need to re recognise is pent. Pentene means that there are five carbon atoms. So I'm going to start by drawing five carbon atoms like that. The ene means that this is an alkene, which means that there is going to be a double bond between two carbon atoms. And for now, I'm always going to put them on the last two carbon atoms. It doesn't really matter where we put them, although um, uh, if you work uh, do chemistry at a further level, you'll realise that actually if we put them between these two carbon atoms, it's a slightly different compound, but we're not going to worry about that at the moment. And then I need to put in all of the hydrogens. And remember that there's a hydrogen missing there because of the double bond, and there's a hydrogen missing there because of the double bond. And the formula for that um, alkene is C5H10. So here are five questions to have a go at to review what we've just done. If you want to pause the video now and have a go at the questions, and then I'll give you the answers when you've unpaused. So, you should um, have had a go at those questions. Um, ethene would have had this structure and the formula C2H4. Butene would have had this structure 
with the formula C4H8. The general formula of an alkane is something that we reviewed at the beginning of this, and the general formula for an alkene, I apologize, is CNH2N. Unsaturated, the easiest uh, thing for us to say is that it has at least one carbon to carbon double bond. And what I should have said there is it's a hydrocarbon that has at least one carbon to carbon double bond. Okay, alkanes undergo addition reactions. And they can undergo addition reactions, or the ones that we need to know about, with halogens. So the halogens is the general name for any group 7 element, and we need to know chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And then this happens at room temperature. I'm going to draw the structural formula of each of these because it will help us to understand what's going on in the addition reactions. So Cl2 is a chlorine atom bonded to a chlorine atom with a single bond there between them, bromine to bromine, iodine to iodine. They can react with water, um, but this reaction won't happen at room temperature. We need a catalyst, such as sulfuric acid. And just as a bit of practice, we can think about the formulae of those there. Um, uh, but I'm also going to think about um, the structure of water. And I'm going to draw it like this, as a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen and a hydrogen and uh, when we looked at acid base chemistry we would have talked about this being as a hydroxide it's not really a hydroxide in this case but it allows us to think of water as existing as a hydrogen atom bonded to an oxygen and a hydrogen so that this is one part of it and this is another part of it um, and then finally we've got hydrogen um, and if I draw the structure of hydrogen it's a hydrogen bonded to another hydrogen atom um, and uh, this reaction does not take place at room temperature. Uh, you'd need a catalyst again, uh, such as platinum, which is a symbol as PT, or palladium PD. So, we are now going to have a look at actually working out what happens in these addition reactions. So I'm going to, my example number one, is going to be the reaction between butene and bromine, Br2. So as my first step, I'm going to draw the structure of butene. And then I'm going to draw bromine as its structure, which is Br, Br. Now, two things happen when um, a alkene reacts with uh, a, a small atom, uh, sorry, a small molecule. The first step is that the double bond breaks. So here's my molecule with the uh, double bond breaking. And the second step is that the two atoms that make up the small molecule that I'm adding get added to the spare bonding positions on these two carbons that have now lost their um, that have lost lost the double bond, so they have a spare bonding position. So one of those bromines gets added there, the other bromine gets added there. Okay. Um, for interest, you don't need to know this, but this come, but it, it will help us understand uh, some chemistry later on. Uh, this is called 1,2-dibromo-butane. Notice that this changed to butane, and it's changed to butane because it has lost the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond. This isn't something you need to be able to do at this stage, though, so don't panic about that. Um, my second example is going to be the reaction between butene and water. And this one's a little bit more complicated. So my first step again is to draw out my starting uh, molecules. So there is butene and water and I've drawn water out the way 
that we drew it out um, to show the molecule. So remember what I did last time. Step one is to remove the double bond. Now, we have a slight problem compared to the previous example because um, and when we worked at, looked at bromine, both of these were the same, but they are different here. So we could put this hydrogen onto this bonding position, or we could put it onto this bonding position, and we could put the OH onto this bonding position or this bonding position, but actually it doesn't matter. When this reaction is carried out, we actually form, uh, find that both of these um, options happen, but that one of them happens to a greater extent. So we get one particular molecule formed um, in a greater quantity than the other one. And the one that we get formed in greater quantity is where the hydrogen is added to here and the OH is added to here. But it would be absolutely okay for you to instead draw this compound. Either is acceptable um, at this level, although we find for reasons that we'll study later, that this is the one that is more likely to be formed. Uh, just for completeness, if you want to know, then this compound is called but, sorry, butan-2-ol, and this compound is called butan one all. Maybe you could have a think about why that is. So, with those in mind, if I just review at what we ha at what the two examples that we've done, I'll go back to example number one up here. The first step is we draw our two structures, butene and bromine, but drawn out as a bromine molecule. Step one, or sorry, step two, we draw the structure again without the double bond, which means that there is a spare bonding position on this carbon and a spare bonding position on this carbon. And then in step three, we add the, the small molecule, we break it in half, and then we add one bromine there and one bromine there. In example number two, here's my step one, butene and water drawn out with a hydrogen with an OH. Step two, draw the molecule out without the double bond We've got a spare bonding position here and here. And step three, add hydrogen from water to one of them and OH from the water to the other. Remember, it actually doesn't matter which way we add it around, although this one is the more likely product to be formed. So with that in mind, I would like you to have a go at the next three. Uh, there's three questions here. I'll do them in, in batches of three so you can see them. So if you want to pause the video now, And then here are the other three. If you want to pause the video now. Having done that, I'm now going to work through the answers for you. So uh, propene, the product here would be this one. Out of interest, this is called 1,2-dibromo. Propane. Uh, this molecule will be here. So I've added a hydrogen to there and an OH to there. Notice the bond is from the carbon to the oxygen of the OH. That's very important. Propane and iodine. Iodine there. Iodine there. Maybe you had a go at the name. This is called 1,2-dibromo. It's not. I do apologise. 1,2-diiodo propane. I didn't add the name there. If you want to know, that one's called butan 2 ol um, Example number nine. This reaction is actually an example of something called a hydrogenation, and we're just adding hydrogen. So we are turning butene back into uh, butane. Uh, this reaction here, pentene and chlorine. Uh, 
if you had a go at naming it, it is 1,2-dichloropentane. And the final example, uh, the reaction between ethene and water would produce this compound, which is called ethanol. Thank you very much.